This one's kind of a crazy one that I never would have thought existed, but some people make like five grand a month doing this. This video will be a little bit different than most of the videos you've seen with similar topics. I filmed it six times and every time it has not been good enough. The core essence of starting a business is not having money. It's providing value. And this is my business. So if I can't provide value to you, what am I doing? I wrote down 25 zero cash business options and I'm gonna pick out 10 of them, the 10 best, because you don't want the BS, do you? I've done a lot of these. Uh, I started my first few businesses with no money at all, so I'm very familiar with the hustle. It takes creativity, do you have that? It takes hard work. Are you willing to be a hard worker? If you are, then all that is in front of you, all that uh, is an obstacle to you, is the gumption, the get going, the doing it. So let's talk about 10 businesses you can start with no money. Anyone can do this. The first thing is what I'm doing right now and it's YouTube, talking on YouTube. This can be a YouTube account, it can be social media accounts, it can be a website, but you are an influencer of sorts. You are taking things that people value, old houses, arborist school, meats, how to make money, Funko Pops, old coins, any of that stuff, and you're making content that people want to learn because it provides them value. What you do then is you monetize the value through ads, eBooks, affiliate links. You look at what I do. I have affiliate links for all the stuff I use. I have eBooks, I'm working on courses, all of that stuff in addition to AdSense, pays me to make videos like this. What interests you? You're watching the video. You have to have something in mind that you wanna pursue. Why not start off writing blog posts or making a social media account or making YouTube videos in that topic and validating the idea before putting cash down? The next one is starting a virtual assistant agency. I've done this because it took me so long to find good virtual assistants. It was like a 10% success rate. So I said, you know what? If I'm having so much difficulty picking out virtual assistants, surely everyone else is too. You get a roster of reliable virtual assistants. You pay them X dollars an hour and you charge small businesses who have data entry tasks or online research tasks. Uh, you know, 12 bucks an hour. You're paying six, you're charging 12, you're making $6 profit. Now these numbers, I'm just using them as placeholders, right? The market changes. What they're doing changes. But if you can recruit and treat your employees good and let them know they're gonna have reliable income because a lot of these people are in countries where a reliable income is not easy to get. If you can provide them with work and opportunity and direct them, you are providing a service not only to the clients you have, but also your employees. Maybe you don't like online stuff. You're not so computer literate. You can still use social media to promote your personal training business. And this can really be any like manual labor for money type business initially. I'm just using personal training because a lot of you out there are in great shape. So why not make some money off of that? You have your Instagram account, you have your TikToks, whatever it is, and that gets you clients. You develop a relationship with local gyms or heck, even just in the park, and you charge people money to work out the way you work out. Now, how do you scale this up though? So what you do is don't call it Blake's hard body. Don't call it that for a lot of reasons. What you call it is, is something, something, something that has no relation to you as an individual. You know, let's say you're in Detroit, you'd call it uh, Detroit Athletic Workouts. That's a bad name, but you get what I'm saying. So then they're not expecting you to train them. They're expecting results that you show. That little shift in perception allows you to hire employees. You are hiring people to train people in a way that you prescribe. You're making money off the value providing and you are hiring people to do it. I also want to say that with all of these businesses that require any sort of uh, transaction between individuals where you're not covered by like, let's say you do, well, we'll get to that in a second. The next one is going to be Teespring. 
let's say you do Teespring. You're not really gonna need insurance for Teespring, but all the other ones, if you're doing personal training, even if you're doing just like a business where you own product, you're gonna have to have some sort of insurance. It's not gonna be expensive. I have a million dollar policy. It's like 35 bucks a month. So what about print on demand? Print on demand. There are tons of options for this. Teespring, Amazon Merch, Redbubble. What the concept here is, is you make your own images. You can't just steal, you know, like a picture of some celebrity and say it's your own. It has to be your own made image. You put it on t-shirts or bags or backpacks or stickers, but you don't hold in the inventory. The way it works is you put it on this website like Teespring, and when someone buys it through Teespring or Amazon Merch, they pay the company, the company ships it out to them, and you get a cut of it. There's no money down, you don't have to buy uh, a screen press machine or 10,000 t-shirts. Now your margins are a lot slimmer than if you had this stuff yourself, but there's no money down. It's a, a zero cash business. You can start today. Now I did this in the 2016 election. Uh, I made a bunch of political humorous t-shirts and I would link to them in articles online. I'd say, wow, this shirt's hilarious. Look how funny it is. And it'd be some pun or you know, some bipartisan hack joke. Uh, and I sold about, I don't know, $10,000 worth uh, in two or three months. And so that's, you know, a pretty pretty sizable amount of money. It wasn't all cash. That was just like the gross revenue. So I think I made about about two grand. Uh, but still, very uh, a very easy zero cash business you can do on the side. What I've seen a lot of people do, and this actually goes back to our initial YouTube, you know, influencer side hustle business, is being a garbage picker. Not a garbage man who picks up trash and throws it away, but someone like Taco Stacks. He's a huge YouTuber who drives around and picks up trash, he scraps the metal, he resells it at flea markets, but he makes video content doing this. He gets these trash items for free, he uploads the videos for free, and he's making a bunch of money both selling items and selling his content. Again, he's finding value that's free in the world. It could be garbage. It could also be rocks. It could also be pine cones. It could be tumbleweeds. All of this stuff sells online. And if you film yourself procuring it, you can make money on both ends of the transaction. A very similar business to what I just said, picking up trash, we're gonna go with two. This is a two banger right here. That's being a dog walker and being a mobile auto detailer. If you're a dog walker, it's gonna be a bit harder to scale up because you only have so many hands, but what you can do is integrate your business with other businesses. Dog walking and grooming, dog walking and training, and as you develop a larger portfolio of services you can sell, you make more money per dog, and eventually you can create some sort of business where you can hire people to do what you're doing, and all you do is market the services. The same thing with auto detailing. You can make content, you know, oh, so satisfying content of like cleaning dirty floor mats, and you can charge for it, and because you're mobile, you go there with your auto detailing supplies, you can charge more. That's called added value. Not everyone has such detail-oriented skills as cleaning all of the dirt out of a carpet in your car. I know I certainly don't. But if you do have skills in other niches, if let's say you're a survivalist, or you're really good at identifying uh, forageable mushrooms, or you're very good at crocheting, what you can do is become a teacher. Now you can teach basic topics on like VIP Kid or Schoolie or Brain Fuse, or you can make your own school, your own institute. Who's stopping you from making the Greybeard Institute of Pirate History? Not me. All you have to do is make content, and if it makes someone's life better, either through entertainment or real value, you can charge money for that. You can monetize that. You can sell courses on something like Udemy, or Gumroad. Udemy takes more of a cut. Gumroad is just like, hey, sell your stuff here. We'll just take money for it. I've sold tons of PDFs that are courses, eBooks, worksheets on Gumroad, and people pay upwards of 50 bucks for them because they help them make money. This one's a kind of a crazy one that I never would have thought existed, but some people make like five grand a month doing this. Uh, and that's selling your old notes online from college, high school, whatever. You sell your old notes, you scan them, you put them on like a website like StudyPool, 
and people pay money for them. You've already made them. This is just pure passive income. And if you get good enough or smart enough and you start going around to dumpsters or garbage cans at the end of the semester and picking up all their old notes, maybe you sell those too. Now, of course, there's going to be rules and limitations. And I don't know if you can do that, but just the core concept of taking notes Maybe you buy them. You haven't signed a contract saying, yeah, I give you the right to all my notes. You can sell those and make money off them. It's just, you know, simple kind of weird, creative businesses just like this that can turn your life from being broke and without direction into something fun that makes you money and is enjoyable. I've got two final ones left, and that's Airbnb Cleaner and Personal Shopper. And these are both kind of similar because what you're gonna be doing is going around to, in one case, let's say you go to Airbnb or VRBO, and you create a client list based off of that. You don't contact them on the app because it's probably spam, but you figure out how to get a hold of them, and you say, hey, how much do you pay to have your Airbnb cleaned? because I know you do, you have eight of them in the city and you live across the country, how much do you pay? I'll do it for 80% of that or whatever it is. Or maybe they say, oh, well, we just, you know, I do it myself. I drive six hours and do it myself. And you go, oh, geez, have I got a deal for you? Instead of you driving 12 hours, which is, you know, a cost of at least 200 bucks in time and gas, I'll do it for a hundred bucks. And you get four or five clients like that and you do uh, a cleaning every other day, you're making a lot of money. You can then outsource the cleaning to other people and suddenly your job is not scrubbing toilets, it's finding people to scrub toilets. It's finding toilets to be scrubbed. The same kind of goes for being a personal shopper. Like yes, you could do it on Shipt or any of the litany of grocery delivery apps out there, but that's gonna cut into your margin. What you can do is erase the middleman and just go around to your neighbors or find a community of people who are very busy, maybe they're elderly. There's tons of reasons why they'd wanna have someone buy their groceries for them. And you say, hey, I will get all of your groceries, you know, once every two weeks, once a week for a fixed price plus the cost of groceries. That saves them money because they're not paying a huge exorbitant fee from whoever delivers them, whatever app does, and you're making more money because you have reliable recurring income that pays you more than the app would. By cutting out the middleman, you help both them and yourself. And that kind of creativity is what all of these businesses rely on. You say, hey, here's something people want. How can I provide value in a different way? That's what we do as entrepreneurs. As business owners, we provide value. And so if this video provided you value, please, I encourage you to give it a big thumbs up, comment below with if you're motivated to do this, what you think you might be good at. And please subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys later because I wanna help you make more money and YouTube's how I do it.